Hello everybody, it's Pablo Wagesen back at it with another YouTube speech. Um, so the topics for today is Bruno Mars and cultural appropriation. Was, um, so cultural appropriation is, you know, when a person does something from a different culture. And, um, which I, I like that. I like people doing things from different cultures, but some people don't like that. They think that people should stay in their lane, that they should only do things from their own culture, that they shouldn't have, like, Iggy Azalea getting rich off of um, African American music, and Elvis was a culture thief. He's a great guy. I mean, Elvis like publicly admitted that he was influenced by African American musicians. Like, yes, I mean I understand it's unfair that um, Chuck Berry, um, who was one of the um, early um, rock and roll stars, African American, didn't get the popularity that Elvis got. I mean, it was during the civil rights era, and I. And yes, I think Elvis should have said more to speak up for our civil rights. Definitely, he should have done more. But I don't think it's a culture thief, and I think it's just people are just were just resentful that white Americans were more likely to listen to their own people rather than giving Chuck Berry a chance, which is understandable. But fast forward a couple decades, and people think it's bad that Miley Cyrus and Iggy Azalea you know, like copying African American styles and they think they try too hard. Like, whatever, I mean. Cause they can just laugh about it. I don't, I don't think it's a scandal, but people treat it like a scandal. So this, um, this year, um, there's this, um, YouTube channel called The Grapevine. They had a panel discussion about Bruno Mars and his, now they ask, is he, like, unfairly profiting off of black music? Um, not unfairly, I mean, he made good music. I mean, what? But this is, and there are like people in the panel discussion, some of them defended him, saying, hey, you know, he made good music, it's a good song, like, he respects the culture, and he, um, he always gave credit to, um, the musicians that came before him. He first had this one, like, crazy lady, um, Saren Sensei. African American, but she has a Japanese nickname. What's it? Okay, but the thing is, like, she complains that Bruno Mars is unfair, that Bruno Mars is profit, profiting off of black music, that it's unfair that a non-black person of color is, um, profiting, profiting off of black music. But she gives herself a Japanese nickname. And the funny thing is that she said that, oh, Bruno Mars is a karaoke singer. It's pronounced karaoke, not karaoke. Couldn't like <laughs> culturally appropriate Japanese like nicknames. You also learn to pronounce Japanese words correctly. Because <laughs> karaoke was a Japanese um invention. So if you're going to um pronounce you also learn to pronounce it correctly. I mean okay, I, I don't speak Japanese but at least I know the pronunciation schemes for the letters, I mean. It's not karaoke, but anyways, okay, going back to, um, she said it's unfair that a non-black person of color is profiting off, profiting off of black music. But then when, like, the real, um, African-American musicians that, um, had hit records like Jimmy Jam, Babyface, Stevie Wonder, they defended Bruno Mars, so I think, um, certain Sensei is just jealous that um, Bruno Mars is hot now because she's not. Kind of like <laughs> Nelly is like early 2000s. Like Nelly, people question if his music is real hip hop. He's like, those who say that or have the album flop, mad because I'm hot, mad because he's not. So that's, I think all the je jealousy towards Bruno Mars just people mad because he's hot and they're not. It's fine. I mean, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, going back to the hip hop history. Okay, like. Started in the Bronx, right? It was a mostly African American dominated genre, but because it's in the Bronx, so there's a lot of um, a lot of the neighborhoods have a mix of African American and Puerto Ricans in the same neighborhood. So there's African, there's not only African Americans, but also Puerto Ricans in the, in hip hop from the very beginning. DJs like some rappers and break dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the originator of hip hop, like the. Um, 
Look at Godfather Hip Hop, DJ Kovar. He's what do you call it, black, but he's from Jamaica. See, because what he did was like in Jamaica, they had these um parties where they get people would rhyme over beats and all that stuff, and we even had reggae and dub and other genres and. He you know, about the same kind of parties to um to the South Bronx. But I think in the South Bronx like, a lot of the US born African Americans are into funk and disco so alright well it's the audience reverse okay we'll just um play disco and funk but we're st still rhyming over beats and that's why like the that's the early hip hop music a lot of hip hop um music is mostly rhyming over funk and disco. Then also another thing that started in the 1970s, electronic music. The main innovators, Kraftwerk. White German guys from Germany. So all the EDM that you listen to now, all the house and techno and trance and all these different like um, dubstep, all that goes back to Kraftwerk. So all that electronic beats that hip hoppers are like rapping over, that's influence of craft work. Because you know most of the time you listen to rap music, it's mostly over electronic beats, it's not like live instruments. Like sometimes you do, sometimes you do listen to the roots, it's mostly live instruments, which is fine. But well, she is electronic, and, and the thing is, like, you talk to Grandmaster Flash, Africa Bombada, Dr. Dre, all the early um, hip hop innovators, like producers, they say Kraftwerk is one of their major influences. So, anybody who wants to talk about hip hop, you better give Kraftwerk their proper respect. Hip hop is not just only African American music. Yes, it's dominated by African Americans. Yes, DJ Kuhar, which is from Jamaica. Okay, he's not from the South. He's not from. He's not from Atlanta. Everyone thinks hip hop's from Atlanta now because Atlanta took over the hip hop scene. But he's not from Atlanta or New Orleans. He's from Jamaica. So they think, oh, Bruno Mars. That's unfair for that. That a non-black person of color is profiting off of black music. Well, a lot of non-Jamaican black people have profit off of DJ Kuhar's innovations. <laughs> There's so much music, man. It's like, music and people influence each other. It's like, it's okay. If we get mad over stuff like that, it's like, man, ridiculous. So ridiculous. It's like, um, yeah, like, um, I remember that I'm talking about the Latino influence because, yeah, they mentioned, you know, same discussion, um, that certain sensei had or sensei made sort of mimic of things, like, there are other um, people in this discussion, almost all of them African American. Like I think there's one Latino looking person, but maybe she has African blood. I mean, I don't know, whatever. But it's alright. But um, but anyways, yeah. So this bottom ten person is um, uh, African American like discussion panel. And someone I'm defending Bruno Mars. Like, hey, look, hip like, yeah, hip hop had Af African American influences, and hip hop also has Hispanic influence, Puerto Ricans. So there's a lot of um, Latino influences in hip hop. Like even like um so you, even if you talk about um the um like the West Coast hip hop, like going from New York to LA, okay, LA. A lot of West Coast hip hop watching like all the videos from Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, especially in the nineties, during all the khaki uniforms and stuff. That that's how I start with the Mexican Americans. The low riders are like the hydraulics. The Mexican American of the country Chicano was like the auto mechanics there they like, oh, thought it was pretty cool too and like how these cars bouncing around like this. And you know, the African Americans thought, Oh, it's pretty cool to have that too, let's put it in our videos and drive that too, it's all good, right? So I think culture mixing is good. Okay, going back to the East Coast, um like White Club, Haitian refugee, um Yeah, the example of Cuban song Juan Panamera. I feel like that Cinderita song is um, Go Down to Miami, which is a two life crew, which has like a kind of like a mixed group because they had an Asian guy, um, well, African or Asian guy, um, Fresh Kid Eyes, yeah. Also, had, um, 
for the Marquis and Luke, I mean, first kid I see from Trinidad, I know Luke has family in Bahamas or some other Caribbean islands. Yeah, they sampled a Carlos Santana song, it's like, there's always been Mexican influences in um, hip hop, like, or like, Latino influences, Cuban, Puerto Rican. People can even listen to like Tupac, some song like, okay, there's not really Latino beats, but they're, they're the producer for uh, from All Eyes on Me, Johnny J, the Mexican American guy, helped make a lot of songs on All Eyes on Me, Tupac. Easy worked with um, Kid Frost, and I think when Jerry Harris said like in his book that um, if Easy lived a little, little longer, he might have done more with. Latino um, hip hop. That was one of his goals. He would work do more Latino hip hop um, artists. And um, yeah, okay. Going back to what Saren Sensei said. That, oh, it's unfair that Bruno Mars won a Grammy album of the year. The Prince didn't win one. That it's just like, oh, African Americans are like you know like they don't get the proper deal. They don't get the recognition. Okay, Prince. His album of the year, like he was up for album of the year 1985, right? He didn't win? Why? Bruno Mars was born that year, so why didn't he win? Because Lionel Richie was up for the same award that Lionel Richie won. So Prince lost to another black guy. It's like, come on, man. Like, just like Charles Barkley, he didn't win the NBA championship because he was up against Michael Jordan. But I say Prince didn't win because he's black. He win he didn't win because he was up against Lionel Richie that same year. Come on man, it's like he's talking about the top um, Grammy Award winners of all time. You, you see the list of names including Michael Jackson. He is African American. I know his skin got lighter, but his top album that said sold of all time, Triller. This is before his skin got, got lighter. Prince Jones, African American, produced a whole bunch of records, including Michael Jackson's records. Beyonce won a lot of Grammys, I mean. But Prince didn't win a Grammy because. And then it's not fair that Prince didn't win. Blue Mars win. It's a different era. It's like. What? Like, I remember I mean, this is being going around that, um. Oh, how. It's so bad that Nakamo won a Grammy for rap. Music, but Tupac and Biggie and PRS won, and Rakim, all the public enemy didn't win. It's a different era. It's like, again, like LeBron James didn't play against Magic Johnson because it's a different era. Michael Moore is a different era from Tupac and Biggie. By the time Michael Moore started making records, Tupac and Biggie were already dead. And, okay, let's talk about Tupac and Biggie because, like, all the people that's listed on the memes, like, Tupac and Biggie were like, the most popular. Rapper is like, okay, Tupac, he didn't win because in 1995, when some of his music was up for Grammy nominations, he lost to, um, for Album of the Year, lost to Night by Nature, Par Poverty's Paradise. And Night by Nature was big time back then. They were big time. And for Song of the Year, he lost to Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise. So that was the year of the Paradise, but Gangsta's Paradise was like the number one song of the year. MTV, like, all the top 100 videos of the year, the Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise was number one. That's why he was the number one song of the year. He has the number one song of the year, not some white alternative group. It was Coolio that won. He had number one uh, song of the year, he won the song of the year for hip hop, like. So it's like, so it's not Macklemore's fault, right? That Tupac released the song the same year as Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise. Okay, the following year, 1996, All Eyes On Me, right, Tupac's most popular album, that's the same year he died. He didn't, he didn't win album of the year, because Fuji's had also had an album that year. So he lost to Fuji's, like I mentioned with Clef earlier, Haitian Refugee, that's how they call themselves the Fuji's. So, this is I was like... Well, he didn't look so like I looked to a bunch of Haitian refugees, which that's all good. I mean, notorious the following year, notorious B.I.G. died. Um, but he also had his album um, Life After Death. It was up for a Grammy, lost for the album year because Puff Daddy, his own producer, had his own album the same year. So he lost Biggie lost to his own producer. 
and the song of the air, like Biggie had hypnotized by the same year, or Will Smith, um, also like came back from making Hollywood movies, and Will Smith won that year. So, and they talk about culture influences again. So, um, let's also talk about like culture influences. Like, okay, people said DC Boys are like cultural appropriators that they're trying to they, they're trying to hard to be black and and there's un okay yeah, I find I understand it's unfair that maybe BC Boys sold a little more than Run DMC even though they both made the same kind of music like hip hop with a lot of rock influences and stuff okay I understand that but but that's also remember, okay the BC Boys they say they're trying to be black and all that but and that's there's some of that but they did a lot of punk rock influences and they brought their white fraternity boy influences to hip hop in their, in their music. And guess what? NWA considered them as one of their um, influences. So yeah, that's BC Boys influenced by Run DMC and all the other um, um, African American hip hop artists. But in turn, they influenced NWA. Because you ask MC Ren, Ice Cube, what was one of the influences? BC Boys. Because you know, Beast Boys had a you know, wild style, and of course, NWA took it even further. And from NWA, Dr. Dre was a mentor to Eminem. So it's like, <laughs> so everyone thinks that all music only comes from one ethnic group. No, the ethnic groups influence each other. So as hip hop was started with a Jamaican guy, with influence of African Americans and Latinos, and of course, the white boys, the white girls brought their style too. And and they influence each other. It's like, and that's what Bruno is. He's like, he's influenced by all these different cultures, and I don't see anything wrong with it. He made good music. More power to him. And if, if you think that he had better music than him, then go make it. Go make your own music that's hotter than his music, then. Sell some hit records. Bruno Mars, like, after seeing that whole um, video of Sarah and Sensei saying our lunatic crap. Like all of like the top African American producers like um Jimmy Jam defended him. Um Ter um I was a Ted Riley um defended him, Stevie Wonder, Charlie Wilson, all the people with legendary make hit records, they defended Bruno Mars. So <laughs> to some woke SJW Panty who hasn't made a hit record or people who actually made hit records and influence old generation of musicians. I mean I'm gonna go with Charlie Wilson and Jimmy Jam and Babyface and Teddy Riley and um, Stephen Warren and not some woke SAW pansy that don't know what the hell they're talking about, okay? It's ridiculous. So, Bruno, keep doing your thing, keep making your music, and I can't wait to see what's your next thing, alright?